probably started in my head a long, long time ago. I had been in the restaurant business working as a dishwasher, and all, like all young kids do. And um, I had some family was from Great Britain, so I was always interested in that, the Beatles, cars, motorcycles, all that stuff. And I went over to Great Britain um, and found the pubs and saw that the difference between a pub and a restaurant was significant. Right. The pubs were really a place to hang your hat with your family, your friends, bring your dog in, whatever you like to do, <laughs> and just, just hang out. Restaurants are really to satisfy the urge for eating. You're hungry, you eat, you leave. So I got behind the bar working at a few different places, and I just decided that at some point in my life I needed to bring a pub to a neighborhood. Um, so that was the, that's how it really started in my mind. And then further on in life, I got an opportunity to go to England many, many times. It made some friends over there and really got really familiar with what um, a pub is to a, a village, which is it's the, you go there after a wedding, before a wedding, a funeral, your babies are born, you know, whatever you do, and you use the pub for your social, social circle. So being in the restaurant here in the States and being in the business, I just was bored with working in restaurants. It right. Just, it just, it just was boring. So I got the opportunity at one point to, um, to go into business for myself, and um, I failed the first time. I failed because I didn't understand business, and I failed because I had a terrible landlord. He went out of business and so did I. So I had to start back to square one. So I went to work for a friend of mine um, at a place called the Trowbridge Tavern in Bourne became very, very friendly, and I still have this idea in the back of my head, and one day I said, let's buy a little pub. Let's, let's buy a pub and do something British. He said, great, let's do it. So we found a little place here in downtown Plymouth, downtown cafes, no food, it's just a bar. And we turned it into the first British beer company. Um, funny, the name British Beer Company came about because uh, we didn't know what to name it. And our attorney was on the phone, he wanted to get the thing going, and we had like 30 seconds to put it together. And I was sitting in my office looking at a poster for the BBC, British Broadcasting, and I said, hmm, British Beer Company, BBC. So that's how the name came along. So it kind of inched its way along, kind of like that as we went. About 20 years ago, the beer industry was really becoming defined by craft. Mm -hmm. So we didn't fall into it. It was by design, but it was an opportunity at the time to take advantage of the marketplace, so we did it. So the success of the place at the very beginning was the fact that we were the first around to ever have this many beers on tap. And second of all, we were beholden to nobody. Right. We could do whatever we wanted to do. So it wasn't really a theme. Right. It really was, um, we didn't want to be perceived to be contrived in any way. We wanted to be a real pub. So I mm -hmm. worked at the pub every day for seven years. We serve food, but we're not a restaurant. We serve beer, but we're not a bar. We have wine, we have whiskey, we have all that. We have entertainment. We have a little bit of everything going on for whomever wants to enjoy what's going on. That's really what defines the BBC. It's not one particular thing. It's an interesting business. I mean, it's a business of people first. Um, if you're in this business just to make money, you're probably going to fail. Yeah. You have to have some passion about what you do, no matter what you do. But when you're dealing with people, you're dealing with people on all different levels. They're sad, they're happy, they're, you know, whatever, whatever the scenario is. And you really, really have to be cognizant of that as you go through your day. So for us, having 14 different locations, we stress that to all of our people to slow down. If you don't get to the paperwork, that's okay. The people are the most important thing um, going forward in any one particular business day. We don't rattle off a whole week's worth of stuff to people. We want them to understand that's one day at a time, one shift at a time, one person at a time, one meal at a time, one beer at a time, whatever that is. Because you have to be real. We all get... Um, we all go to eat, we all go to the dry cleanings, we all go to the market, we get slept around all the time, pushed around, ignored, all that kind of stuff. And when you come into a BBC, and I'm only talking about BBC because that's all I can really talk for, we want you to relax. We don't rush you, we don't care if you turn the table over, if you want to sit there with your laptop and work all day, that's okay. We've got fireplaces in all our pubs, we have a large, beautiful draft selection. And our, our greatest thing going for us are our employees. They're, they're the best. They're the best. We have literally no turnover. We treat people correctly. Uh, we have this little thing called the Hannah Standard, uh, which is my daughter's name. And when she was tiny, really little, we started this thing. I remember growing up in the business, again, being treated very shabbily. Right. So we decided right then and there that the Hannah Standard would be, if my daughter ever came home and said, Pop, 
that guy touched me, pushed me, threw something at me, screamed at me. I don't want to work there anymore, conversation. I wanted to make sure that was never going to happen with us. Right. So everybody in the company, old, new, no matter what department, has my phone number. They can call me at any time. If they're not comfortable talking to their manager for some reason or whatever, my door is always open and so is Gary's. My phone is on 24-7. They can call me. And everybody in the company has my number. And it's one way we can ensure that what we say they can trust, we mean it. And that's a big difficult thing in the business today. You just don't know anymore when you send your kids off to work what's going to happen there.